Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with a bit of Total War Warhammer quick match gameplay. This time around I'm playing as Norska against the Empire led by God of Conquest on the map Longwheel. Um, so yeah, trying out some of the uh, recently changed Norska. So uh, before we start, I do want to go over some uh, the fact that uh, Norska was obviously recently changed and um, there was a it's a bit of a hot fix, uh, quick patch, and um, m there were some other changes. Um, Battle pilgrims were slightly nerfed, their damage up was reduced, and uh, there were some uh, cost adjustments to various chaos units. And I do believe the uh, chaos version of Round Helkin uh, got a slight buff. Um, but uh, the main changes were, of course, to Norska. Norska got some major balance overhauls, and um, mostly involving cost increases. The mammoth attacks slow weren't more slowly now. Werken lost five attack and five melee defense. Um, Skin Wolves went up, uh, both Armored and Armored went up a hunt for 100 points, and the Maws of Savagery went up by 200, I do believe. And um, the uh, Marauder Javelins were nerfed as well. So I wanted to give some of these units a try, though, see how, see how they'd work out in uh, quick play, and uh, see, how, see how influential those changes really were. Um, so here you can see my comp. Going to be throwing in slow mo a little bit early on. Running Wolfric, of course, here. Uh, running, of course, Sea Fang, Sword of Torgald, uh, Stand Your Ground, all that stuff. On foot, though, just to make him a bit more survival. Obviously, Empire could bring a lot of skirmish units. I don't want to get deleted by him. Shaman Sword of Metal. Um, I wanted to give, it, give this a shot. Running the uh, Plague of Rust, as well as the, uh, tr or sorry, the Transmutation of Lead, as well as the Final Transmutation, uh, which is considered by many to be the new Fate of Buna. It is a very powerful spell. Then, uh, for my front line, it is a mix of Marauders with Grey Weapons and Marauder Berserkers. It is a bit of a um, weak front line, no shields, uh, very little armor, so they will melt pretty quickly, but they also dish out a lot of hurt, so that's what I'm kind of gambling on. Uh, then two, two Werken, one of which does have the um, Ruinous Flesh, uh, which increases missile resistance and armor of all nearby units. And then I have the Maws of Savagery on one end, and the uh, Armored Skin Wolves on the other. And... Um, they are, of course, there to deal with enemy cavalry, get into the enemy backline. This is kind of my cavalry contingent. And my opponent, uh, there will be quite a bit of posturing in the early game. My opponent did a bit of an interesting build, running Balthazar Gelt with uh, all of his spells by the look of it. Uh, stand your ground, of course. Um, <coughs> and, uh, of course, he has the uh, Arcane Conduit. Uh, interesting, I've decided to run two uh, Warrior Priests. Um, which definitely caught me a little by surprise. Warrior Priests are not something you see that commonly, especially because these guys came in without their... Um, Especially because these guys are coming in without their, any of their spells. So, uh, generally, I, I think people prefer captains for this sort of line, but these guys are definitely cheaper, so they might, that might be what my opponent was going for there. And then a Lore of Light Wizard with a Net of a Mintock. For his um, main line of infantry, he's got a mix of Halberdiers um, uh, over on the flanks, three units of Greatswords in the middle, um, two cheap units of Spears, though they are slightly veteraned up, uh, two crossbows, um, a unit of handguns on the flank, and a contingent of Reichsguard and Demigriffs with Halberds. Um, so definitely a pretty wide formation, a lot of units, uh, a lot of heroes, and um, a surprising amount of armor piercing and armor, which definitely I didn't expect. I thought my three Marauders would be more than enough against, say, Greatswords, uh, because usually the Empire won't bring more than one or two. Uh, but this definitely caught me a bit by surprise. <coughs> so you can see, I'm trying to get into position, posture into position, where I can engage my opponent uh, at least partially screened by the trees, or with his skirmish units out of position. I've, at all possible, I want to avoid giving my opponent this, um, a straight charge across open terrain, which was what the initial situation would have been. And as you can see, the cavalry's posturing, uh, pushing forward, and I'm in the meantime, I'm actually doing the opposite. I'm pulling my work in back and my skin holes back, and I'm just basically keeping them together as a blob. I'm trying to move Wolfric over here. The Shaman Sorcerer of Death as well. Uh, I push out with my infantry a little bit and change my and start moving further north. I'm trying, just trying to get this tree line in between me and the skirmish units to mitigate the amount of fire his crossbow can do. Crossbows, um, while not usually not as popular or good as handguns, are incredibly powerful against Norska because Norska's infantry is so lightly armored, and especially the contingent I brought here between the Marauders and the um, Berserkers. Um, the increases in cost uh, with the Skin Wolves and uh, the Maws of Savagery definitely, I think, um, limit my options a little bit as far as what I, what I could bring. But my opponent is drawing up. Uh, definitely a pretty strong force for me to deal with. Uh, the Great Swords could cause a lot of trouble. Um, the Demi Griffs, of course, can be a pain. And, of course, the handguns and crossbows I'm definitely worried about. 
So, uh, right now I'm posturing around with the Shaman Sorcerer of Death, and I start pushing it forward. I'm trying to get a final trans. I have, a, I have enough ones of magic. I'm trying to get a final transmutation off here in the center. Uh, it's, oh well, it's wrong color there, but that's okay. Now pushing forward with my cavalry, just trying to get out of the flank because my opponent is relying on these handgunners to support his cavalry by the look of it. I'm hoping to catch them early on and then um, crush, crush the handgunners behind him. In the meantime, as you can see, some of my infantry is pushing through this woodland uh, here and Wolfric is leading the charge into these crossbows. The crossbows have wasted a lot of fire on the Shaman Sorcerer of Death. I hit these uh, demigriffs, hal halberds, with uh, final transmutation and I'll come crashing straight into them with the, uh, arm with the armored skin wolves. And... Um, as you can see, these poor demigriffs are absolutely collapsing. It's completely falling apart. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the demigriffs basically instantly get deleted. It's a very powerful spell. Uh, great swords over here are trading very effectively against the Bruce of the Hound, and they're trading very effectively against the Marauders. I do pop a Sea Fang over here, just trying to do some damage. It does a little bit to the crossbows. Over here, though, in the forest, where it's mostly a uh, fight against halberdiers and... Um, I got the numbers advantage on these great swords. I'm winning the infantry fight there, and as you can see, my cavalry is doing very well. Now the skin wolves with armor are going to route off. They're not actually a match for halberds in a straight up fight. And my opponent has cast um, transmutation of lead on my units here, which will debuff them significantly. And I've been barding these uh, skin wolves. I definitely think it would have been better off by casting a final transmutation um, if he had the and he should have had the winds of magic for it, but. Um, at least this way he could cover more ground, I suppose. And now, as you can see, the um, Reichsguard is on the retreat. The um, Halberdiers, which are definitely uh, the demigriffs with knights with halberds, are completely falling apart. They've been hit by transmutation of lead. Now my working are getting my opponent's backline, jumping on these crossbows. My mazo savagery on top of the handgunners just destroying them. And the skin wolves will shortly regroup. They are regenerating, and I'll be able to push them back into the fray. Uh, these demigriffs, though, definitely routing off my uh, uh, my marauder great weapons over here. They do cause fear. The marauder great weapons are not particularly tanky. Uh, they're just going to fall apart and retreat. But on the, and then I have one the center with the help of the Shaman Sorcerer of Death and uh, Wolfric. And I'm plowing into these crossbowmen, getting into my opponent's back line, really being, putting the smack down on them. Over here, the uh, Warrior Priest is wavering and will shortly break. He is surrounded by a horde of infantry. And he has very little armor, so he's actually going to die pretty quickly to this combination of marauders, berserkers, and marauders with great weapons. Um, this infantry over here is retreating a bit. But they'll most likely, uh, re there's a good chance they'll regroup and come back eventually. Uh, over here, these Marauder Berserkers are just tanking it out like champs, holding their ground against all these units. I do pop a Sea Fang over here, and as you can see, it gets absolutely massive value for once because all these spearmen are uh, clumped up and halberds are clumped up. Normally, I don't think it's a particularly good spell, but in this sort of situation, it definitely is. Both those are just covering, kind of hovering around. He isn't, this is definitely a problem with bringing a Castle Lord. He's not really able to jump in and dive and support his uh, team. My infantry contingent from the Woodland is coming back. Obviously, the... Uh, Warrior Priest has recovered fairly quickly uh, after being routed off, and uh, this sub is not necessarily that favorable for me. There are still great swords, there are spearmen, uh, there's a light wizard, and more spearmen, and Baltazar, of course, can cast debuffs, and here the brutes of the hound are being netted. Uh, over here, though, the Warrior King and uh, our armored skin wolves have torn through the Reichsguard. They only have one model left, they're completely fleeing from the field. Um, over here, one of the Warrior Priests is also routed off. They have practically no uh, HP left. But Barman does go down, and this will actually do a decent amount of damage to these units because they have very little HP, or sorry, very, very little armor. Uh, finally, these guys do get clear of the uh, net, and they're going to be able to push in very shortly. And my opponent at this point is just getting boxed and surrounded from all sides. This Warrior Priest is coming in, but uh, Wolfric is still very, very healthy, and he's just going to be able to devastate these guys, especially with the help of um, Hunter, Hunter of Champions. And uh, as you can see, my a uh, handful of my infantry have also regrouped. And so, so despite taking some pretty egregious losses, most of my infantry mostly stuck around and uh, came back to the fight. Um, <coughs> so definitely, I think the uh, cost, uh, as far as my opinion on the... Uh, well, I'm going to go over the results here first. Uh, so the, the Warrior Priests didn't really perform all that well for my opponent. I think that uh, with the combination of Hunter of Champions, I do believe he dropped on the this one. And uh, Wolfric's kind of damage output, and the Werkin running amok, and um, the fairly high damage output. But the, but the Berserker, uh, with the help of the um, transmutation of lead, the uh, Brutes of the Hound and the uh, Bar Mirage of the Weapons actually did a pretty okay job, even against the Great Swords, who are kind of geared to tear through most uh, most Norsekin units. The Amaz of Savagery, of course, still absolutely amazing. Uh, they tore through everything here, uh, and of course, with the help of the uh, final transmutation, just deleting those right or Demigriff Knights, who were probably my opponent's best shot of giving me a run for my money there. Uh, my opponent got very little value out of his skirmish units, and um, the, I think this was a combination of factors, not enough focus fire. Uh, a lot of shots were wasted uh, early on against the Shaman's Sorcerer of Metal. Um, 
And uh, the cavalry that should have been screening the handguns got uh, completely trashed trying to charge in a bit prematurely, I think. But but definitely a solid performance from this army. Uh, and obviously this is this army has been uh, nerfed. Oh, I brought several units that have been nerfed or <coughs> their costs increased. Uh, Werekin got nerfed. They lost 5 attack and 5 melee defense. And um, Skinwolves with armor got increased cost by 100. And skin of Savagery up by cost up by 200 so pretty significant changes there Mother of savagery i think it definitely need the nerf i don't agree with the nerfs of the skin wolves and the, the skin wolves with armor i think that the unit uh while perhaps overperforming as infantry for an anti-large unit also underperformed against heavy cavalry for an anti-large unit so i feel like the two factors kind of balanced each other out um and um with the uh <coughs> with the with the uh nerfs i, th I think they're i don't know i think they're a tad overpriced for what they do. I, uh, now that at this point, they're, uh, I definitely don't think they're um, that great of a unit. I, think, I, I definitely think that uh, they didn't need the nerf. The Marauder Hunters, I didn't get to t try them out here. The Werekin, I think, are still absolute powerhouses. The fact that they're a more mobile uh, Gorbul uh, and cheaper and have that Ruinous Flesh ability is just absolutely huge. Um, they're just a very powerful, very powerful unit. Um, and despite the nerfs, and I definitely think they did, did need the nerfs. <coughs> I think most of the nerfs were pretty spot on. Um, I simply don't agree with the one for the skin wolves and the um, skin wolves armor, and perhaps not for the mammoths. I didn't get to try those out in this uh, matchup. Obviously, against Empire with its massive skirmish units, mammoths are a very, very uh, questionable choice. Um, but yeah, definitely think this is a solid comp. I definitely think none of the units have really lost their viability. Skinwolves' armor is still very viable as a support unit. Obviously, probably won't be as uh, mobbable as before. Um, but 100 increase isn't terrible. And the Mazel Savagery, I think, are still an amazing unit. The fact that they get armor piercing is... There's there's no way to... There's just not, no way to describe how useful the armor piercing is. It allows them to tear through anything and everything and um, especially the heavy cab. It, it negates the biggest weakness or downside of uh, skin wolves. Their somewhat trash performance against armored cav and their really trash performance against um, heavily armored infantry. Uh, so yeah, definitely cool. Uh, I did I did enjoy using the Shaman Sorcerer's abilities, the uh, transmutation of lead, or the final transmutation definitely seems to be pretty cool. I definitely like the fact that Lore of Metal, which I used to consider a trash tier, uh, is, has been buffed to the point that it's actually pretty competitive in a lot of ways. Um, <coughs> so definitely glad to see that. Wolf of course, still a champ. Uh, but yeah, uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like or subscribe below. below. Uh, good game to my opponent, God of Conquest here. Definitely hope to see him again on the ladder. Um, as usual, if you guys have any comments, criticism, any ideas uh, for how I can improve my videos, um, or uh, improve my content, or any comps or uh, units you'd like to see showcased, any questions you might have about the game or whatever, uh, feel free to post those comments down in the s uh, or feel free to post those questions or comments down in the comment section. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I possibly can. Um, and yeah. Uh, as usual, I appreciate you all for, for watching, and oh, why for now?